Then they know. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll have to teach people to do. Hi, Ed is going to start the prelude. Hopefully everyone takes this time to sit quietly and center yourselves. Thank you.
come, come into this place, come into this holy space, come into this place that is made holy by your presence in this room. Let us worship together today and let us bless each other and this day that we have before us. Come, come. Our first hymn is called Love is a Circle, and we will have some help to help us sing it. Um, so let us begin. Hello, Elaine. We're going to revive some old traditions here this morning. Love is a Circle is a song that I taught the kids back in the late 70s, early 80s, and it became one of the favorites of this congregation. And since we haven't done it for a long time, and they really haven't had enough practice yet, we're going to do it in the old black tradition of call and response. So I'll sing a line, you sing a line, and then we'll put it all together, I hope. Love is a circle round and round. Love is a circle round and round. Love is up, love is down. Love is inside trying to get out. Love is whirling and twirling about. Love is a circle, it knows no bounds. Love is a circle, it knows no bounds. The more you give, the more comes around. The more you give, the more comes around. Love is ours alone to give.
whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey for this one hour, you are a part of this congregation, and we're glad you're here, and you are welcome. Just so everyone knows, I don't have notes for this, but I think I've heard it enough times. <laughs> After the service, we uh, please join us for coffee hour right through these doors, and you follow the crowd, and, you'll, and hopefully that you will uh, join us. If anyone is new um, and wants us to know it, there are some red cups that if you take a cup of coffee, please use the red cup, and um, that way we'll come and talk to you and, and uh, learn more about you, hopefully. Um, today, we are joined by Reverend Danielle Demona. She has served, as a un in, has served Unitarian Universalism for over 30 years and is the 2018 recipient of the Award for Distinguished Service to the Cause of Unitarian Universalism. She is the 2004 recipient of the Melvin Hoover Beloved Community Award for Outstanding Service to Communities of Color in Unitarian Universalism. In her retirement, Reverend DeBona serves as the Palliative Care Chaplain at South Shore Hospital in Weymouth, Massachusetts. When not serving the UUA, the church, and the community, Danielle describes herself as retired. In her retirement, she trains and shows her dogs and had the honor of showing Rosie, she's a champion, grand champion, <laughs> um, and I can't, it's, it's Aldash, it's a type of Hungarian dog, they're very cute. <laughs> I had to look them up when she told me about it. Very cute dogs. Um, and, and Aldosh, who is, um, and she shows them at the Thanksgiving National Dog Show in Philadelphia and Westminster in Manhattan. She's very busy. <laughs> and we're very happy to have you here with us today. Thank you. Um, can you, want me to do you can. Oh, one other thing. I just wanted to acknowledge that the flowers today are given by Betty and Janet Thornton in memory of Betty's husband, Jim, and granddaughter, Jennifer. Thank you. The flowers are quite beautiful. This is your opportunity to share your goodwill and good fortune with this with this congregation. I hope that you will give generously for the good works of this church, both in your community and outside the walls. The morning offering will now be received.
The reading this morning is written by the Reverend Paul G. Hull. It's called The, Evan the Evangelical Unitarian Universalist. One of the greatest services that you could do for someone is to invite them into this community of caring and hope, of acceptance and love, of seeking and compassion. People are waiting to hear our Unitarian Universalist message of a faith grounded in a belief that the final authority in religious matters rests in each person's engagement with life. And that engagement moves your soul to rejoice. People are waiting to hear of a faith that affirms in each person's core of cores Everyone holds love divine that will not let you go. This is the good news, the spirit of a free faith that we are called to shout about. day. That was gorgeous. <laughs> I 
I hope you will indulge me this morning as I preach from the floor rather than the high pulpit, which is quite beautiful. Um, I like to be close. And my eyesight, nah, not so good up there. So I could say I'm afraid of heights, too. So here are some things I know about this community. First of all, I believe that my sister and I might have bought a Christmas tree here one year. Is that possible? Yes, I see someone nodding his head. It was a while ago. I don't know if you still do that. So as you might have heard today, I've been serving Unitarian Universalism for over 30 years. Um, and um, I've been in this church many times. I know your minister. And I know some things. I know that you're an amazing congregation, that you worship together and you work together and you stay together. You care about each other. Um, there's almost never a conflict. Praise God. <laughs> and when there is, you address it with love. I know these things. I know that you are filled with compassion and you are dedicated to Unitarian Universalism and to this congregation. I know you live your faith with open arms and open hearts. You are committed to this church, to this town, and to those who will come after you for future seven generations. I know these things. I know these things because you are faithful Unitarian Universalists. I think that you are willing to take risks, that although you honor and respect your history, you are not stuck in it, are you? I read the back of the Order of Worship and um, your history is quite amazing. So, my question is, why do we Unitarian Universalists hold all this awesomeness inside our doors? Most Unitarian Universalist churches do this. Not all of them are as awesome as you, but almost all hold their secrets tight to their chest like poker players with a really good hand. Reverend Hull reminds us, this is the good news, the spirit of a free faith that we are called to shout about. When I was 30 years old, I, my fiance died of leukemia, and I was just distraught and destroyed. What I realized I needed at that time was a place to go and lay down my grief so that it could be held by a community of love. I couldn't go back to the Catholic Church where I had been raised. So I did without. Many years later, my future husband and I went to a Unitarian Universalist church. He was on the UUA Board of Trustees, and he had some kind of official thing to do. So I was dating him, and I went with him. And at the end of that service, I was filled with so much love in that congregation. But at the end of that service, I left there furious and angry. Where was this faith when I was 30 years old? I was living in Braintree, Massachusetts. I had grown up in Weymouth. Why was it that I could not, did not know where to go when Alan died? I was furious. I told this man that I was dating how angry I was and how I didn't know if I could ever come back to a UU church because of what they had done to me when I was 30 without knowing, without knowing that all of you sitting in congregations 
had broken my heart before I even knew you existed. So I stomped around for a few weeks and then went back to Unitarian Universalist worship, and here I am. <laughs> but why do we hold our awesomeness like we have an excellent poker hand? How do we reconcile where we are today as Unitarian Universalism in a world that is hurting and aching and needs us? How do we reconcile being in our beautiful congregations, not just this one? Trust me, this sermon has come in handy so many times. Um, how do we how do we accept the fact that we are the answer? I know that sounds very fundamentalist, but we are the answer to so much that is wrong in our world and in our neighborhood and in our town. This is a place of welcome, and I know that. This is a place of love and compassion, and I know that. Some of us have been blessed to have found this place. We encourage spiritual growth and learning. We stress that faith development, understanding what is true for you in your spiritual life, is something to celebrate and work on throughout our lives. And yet, where are those people who are yearning for that permission to grow their spiritual souls? In my job as a palliative care chaplain at South Shore Hospital, uh, most of the people I see are somewhere in the process of dying, you know, tomorrow, six months, four weeks, terminal illnesses. I have a patient right now who is not going to live for the next week or two. He is a devout fundamentalist Christian. I have met with him many times over many admissions. And on Friday, I and the intensive care doctor and the uh, palliative care palliative care NP met with him to tell him that there was nothing else that could be done and that he is dying sooner rather than later. And we wanted to help him have a peaceful death. And how we would do that is invite him to consider accepting comfort measures where we would not jump on his chest and break his ribs. We would not st stick tubes down his throat. This is a man that is dear to us. We have known him for over a year. He said his faith would not allow him to do that. He trusted God and Jesus, and if he allowed us to not do everything possible for him, it would mean that he did not have faith in God. That broke my heart. That broke my heart. And I left his room, and I looked at the doctor and the NP, and I said, his theology is screwed up. The words I really use, I don't think are appropriate in church. <laughs> and I was angry. I said, this is something he has been taught. I was angry for him or for me that he couldn't get there. He is going to have a horrible death. Where was our church when he was learning his, to grow his spiritual soul? Where was a Unitarian Universalist community who might, just might, have had the opportunity to bring him in, to invite him to church? Now, we're not going to bring everybody in who is in the hospital in the exact same situation that my patient is. 
or that is out in the street using drugs and not knowing how to stop and not being loved in any church community. We are also proud that we welcome all who come through these doors and yet look around. We pretty much all look alike. Where are those who wish for a more liberal faith tradition than what they were raised in? Where are our, our, uh, where are our companions of different ethnicities, races, education levels, class. I have preached in many Unitarian Universalist congregations all over the country. And one of the most mind-blowing things that I notice over and over again is that although many of these congregations sit in town, often on top of a hill, sometimes on a main street, all have beautiful front doors leading into the sanctuary. And all of these beautiful doors are closed, closed to the outside world, making it impossible for our neighbors to see and hear our good news. Always, these doors are closed, closed to the glory of the neighborhoods and the people who live in them. Always, these doors are closed closing us in, into a cocoon of safety and self-congratulations, self-congratulations that we are on the inside, we are the chosen people, we got the memo, and we evolved into good, rational, thoughtful, Unitarian Universalists. Friends, times are changing. It is way past time to open these doors. Are you ready to literally throw open the doors at the back there to let out our Unitarian Universalist message of love, compassion, acceptance, and to let in the fresh air and sunlight of possibility, new ideas, new hope, and new life? Now it is often during this point in my sermon, I will march right through the church and throw open the doors. This is not a church that needs to do that because nobody walks back and forth, right? Okay, so metaphorically, we are throwing open the doors, okay? <laughs> now, I have heard these things. Sometimes people are so, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe tunnel visioned, I don't know, but some people take things so literally that even in a case like this, where we're not gonna throw open the doors, congregants say to me, oh, it's too cold. Oh, I can't hear with the doors open. It's too hot. My answer to that is, dear ones, dear people in faith, move. The, the seats up here, it's not the symphony. The seats up here don't cost any more than the seats back there. Feel free to move forward so you can hear, so you can be warm or cool in order to share the message. It means taking your faith seriously, and I already know you do that. So throw open the doors. What would it feel like to take a step into the unknown without a preconceived idea of what that would be like? We're throwing open the doors in our mind today. What would it feel like to hear and see the new the different, with an, instead of a normal reaction of dis-ease, we take a deep breath and a willingness to be open to the possible. Throwing open the doors to our hearts, minds, and souls is the first step to throwing open the doors of our sanctuary. 
I have been told that you are a community of love, that love is what holds you and keeps you into this space and puts roots down right through this floor into the ground, that you are a community of love beyond love. Love beyond love. I've heard that from your minister. So I know it's true, right? Because the minister knows what's going on. This, my friends, is ongoing spiritual work, soul work, the kind of work that shapes us into the people we dream about being. This, my friends, is the work of trust and faith. Faith that throwing open the doors to our hearts, our souls, and our sanctuary will bless us in ways that we cannot possibly imagine. Yes, I know, it's hard to hear. I know it's too cold, too hot. But let us be willing to leave our comfort zone for just a short time for the good of the soul and the lives of our neighbors and throw open these doors. Well now, let us not make the mistake of thinking that throwing open these doors means our work is done. Now we must think about throwing open the doors metaphorically, what would it take to throw open the doors of our hearts and minds and soul? It's not enough to throw open the doors because you want people to come in. You want to learn and grow from the new faces and the new people that are here. You want to serve the community in ways that are, would, might be new to you. That's great. Then I would suggest that metaphorically, please hear this metaphorically, we lock the doors so they can't get out. <laughs> Only because we all have work to do to welcome new people, to bring in new ideas, to serve new communities, and that takes work and that takes faith, and that means making mistakes and be willing to own them so that you and they, those they, you and they will grow together and build a bigger and a stronger community of love. We have faith. There is faith and trust that our openness of heart and soul and sanctuary will not diminish who we are as a UU liberal faith community, but bring us closer to our siblings of faith who do not even know that they are ours. They belong to us. They are our future. They are our present. They are some our past but they belong to us, and they don't even know it yet. So throw open the doors. And with the kind of music you have, you might throw those open anyway, because someone might walk by and hear it and think, oh my gosh, what's going on in there? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's going on in there? What an exciting idea. I pray that you will throw open the doors of your sanctuary, of your hearts and soul, and of your minds. Do so with faith, with love, with humor, with compassion, and you will make a huge difference in this world, in this town, in this community. I know that this town and most of you are struggling with horrible events in the past few weeks. There is no better time. There is no better time 
to help heal each other and the community of people whose hearts are filled with pain. This is the place for them. You are the people for them. Throw it all open. Amen. Please join in singing Immortal Love, hymn number 10 in your gray hymnal. Please stand as you are willing and able. And please sing like you mean it or I'll make you do it twice. singing. Let us go out into the world singing songs that proclaim liberty, songs that turn ashes into garlands, songs that bind up the afflicted and those who mourn, songs that like oaks have roots that go deep and stand strong. Let us go out into the world singing. We know these songs. They vibrate through time in our very souls. They are the songs that give life. They are the songs that give meaning. They are the songs that give us purpose. Now it is our turn to take these life-giving songs out into the world. Let us go now, singing these songs with voices deep and strong, and may the world join us in praise and in celebration and in love. Let us go into the world singing. Amen. So may it be, and many blessings. <laughs> 